Hello, welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. We are out here in Gilbert Hill State Forest, Foxborough, Massachusetts, and today's video is going to be on the stone structure enclosures. We ran into a potential enclosure in the last episode, episode 21, on stone walls. So I thought I'd do a more detailed discussion on enclosures. The research indicates that enclosures were used in a handful of different ways, but mostly around the communing, the interaction between individual ancient Native Americans and the spirits they believed in during certain times of the year or during certain ceremonies. And in fact, Mary and James Gage have done a good job in recreating the ceremonial structure uh, built within the stone objects up in Salem, New Hampshire, in a place that's referred to as the Stonehenge of Americas. So a primary material that we'll be using for support of this episode is their book called Stonehenge of Americas Deciphered. All right, what we've got here specifically is a ring. Uh, and enclosures can be closed or they can be open. They can be a variety of different shapes. The next one's going to be an open V-shape enclosure. But one of the fascinating things that the gauges found in their research around uh, the Stonehenge of Americas was that there may have been different enclosures for common people versus shamans. There were enclosures for preparation that didn't involve the mixing of the spirits, and then a movement to an area that did involve uh, mixing with the spirits. So all that uh, is fairly fascinating given how little we generally know about the ceremonial structures uh, of ancient Native Americans. But because that area in Salem, New Hampshire is so uh, dense uh, with, with a variety of structures, they were able to uh, recreate the flow of the ceremony uh, up there. So what we have here is a ring that presumably if this is enclosure, an individual would sit in it. Some were large enough for groups, some were individuals. The, a couple of fascinating things about this particular structure that we'll show in the LiDAR and in the close-ups with the GoPro are one, this front stone here, which does have the characteristics of a Manitou stone. The fact that sunset in the winter solstice comes is, is exactly that way. So if there's a line through this oval ring and it goes this way, that is sunset on the winter solstice. So if one were facing this way in the ring, that's the area they'd be facing. If they were facing toward the Mantu stone, sunset would be to the rear. And there is a built-in relatively large stone at the base right here that has a big streak of quartz crystal in it, known to be uh, very important in ceremonial structures. So with that, let's take a closer look at this ring, and then we'll go to the next enclosure. As we approach the ring, I'm going to take a shot of what could be a Manitou stone here with the orientation this way to sunset. As we see on the Sunseeker, that is set to December 21st, and it is headed toward 235 degrees southwest sunset on the winter solstice. I wouldn't consider there to be much of a depression in the center here. It's just a ring. It is lower down here on the near side, much higher and sloping away on the far side from where we are right now. And Here we see a clear line of quartz that runs through this embedded boulder and the foundation of this structure. I'd say this is about 
eight feet in length in total and built back here on a large embedded boulder as its base. You can see these stones built up on this boulder and you can see the ground sloping away where I was standing at the opening. Again, the you know, here, here's a very similar, I didn't notice this before. It, this stone is set just like the one I'll cut to it at the uh, 600 foot snake effigy we did in episode 11, where you've got a flat stone that is resting on one side here but completely in the air and put into uh, a supporting stone across there, creating a gap. Um, obviously, you were just throwing these together in haphazard fashion. You would just lay this one down on that one. So that's interesting that that is a very similar design. Quick look. Let's take a quick look at the stone structure in episode 11. This was a 600 foot wall that built into a serpent effigy and you can see on the right side of the stone it is contacting a base stone but as it moves off to the left and upward it isn't parallel it is lifted up over the stone below it by a contact point on the left what i'd like to do now is show some side-by-side -side images now you're going to see a red circle there where the image on the left has a contact point and on the image on the right that lower contact point. Now the image on the left will be a blue circle where the upper point on the left is in the air over the rock below it and the image on the right the same thing. These are two stones sitting with one lower contact point raised up over the stone it could easily lay on but held up in the air for some purpose we can only guess at. I think that parallel construction is very interesting. They are a mile apart from each other. And let's head over to the second enclosure of this episode. All right, we are at what I believe is a, another example of an enclosure. And this is not a completely closed ring. It is almost V-shaped here with a little notch in. Another side there, notch in, there's a stone across here. So maybe at one point it was closed as a ring, uh, but it doesn't appear to be at this point. Now, uh, there's a number of, uh, I would say, modern placements of small crystals on this site, uh, but uh, there are uh, numerous embedded uh, quartz grains here. They have one, two, three. In the back, four, five, so at least five of the what I would consider original structural stones have uh, quartz strong quartz veins in them uh there's the six so this is a, an embedded stone here and here another so that's six or seven stones eight as we go around there's uh two embedded boulders here that that make up the base of this one here and one here As we've discussed in the opening, uh, the common interpretation of enclosures of this nature would be for uh, interaction during ceremonies, times of year, uh, between people and spirits. And the spirits would, they believed, be able to uh, come into the enclosure and then they would potentially interact with them. From an orientation standpoint, if uh, you take, like I take a prayer seat, sort of this way as the exit and orientation, uh, there is not an orientation north, south, east, west, or to uh, any of the um, 
any of the, the solar events, solstice or equinox. However, uh, and I'll take a close-up shot, there is a stone right here that I stepped on as I was filming and I just brushed some leaves away, a line of quartz, where if that were uh, the angle, it would face sunrise, summer solstice, uh, and its back would be to the uh, winter solstice sunset. And so that is uh, a very similar configuration to the ring we saw earlier, similar orientation. Okay, so this would be an example of a not quite enclosed enclosure. Unless, of course, these stones were taken down later on, and then th this would have been a ring uh, very similar to the one we saw in the first scene. So that covers our episode on stone enclosures, uh, where the research indicates the ancient belief system was that spirits uh, would be brought into an enclosure, theoretically held in the enclosure, and then, uh, and then people could interact them with them in certain times of the year. What I did think was interesting about this one, and it is uh, unique in all of the structures I've seen in Gilbert Hills and the surrounding town forest, is the amount of quartz used in this uh, in this stone. We see quartz, white quartz, cloudy quartz, uh, an important element to many Native American structures, not just here in this forest, but all over New England. This one has uh, far more use of quartz in it than any that I've seen, even uh, a 600 foot uh, snake or serpent eff effigy. Uh, the amount of quartz here is unusually large. I find that one interesting. So those of you out uh, looking at structures in your area, keep an eye out for veins or clusters of quartz in structures like this. Okay, as always, appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.